So I just picked up this cheap Geiger counter here. It's called the BR-6. You could get them off eBay here, you see, for like 60 bucks. And I think I even got this one cheaper from AliExpress. But I'm having one problem with it, and that is that I plan on using this as kind of like a desk toy off to the corner. So it would be always powered on via the micro USB connector here. Uh, but in the manual here, it shows that it can be powered from two 1.5 volt dry batteries or 1.2 volt rechargeable batteries, which is nice. You know, you can go and carry it around. It's battery powered. You don't have to have batteries in it, but I like to have those in there at all times so I can just unplug it and then go and use it. But here's the thing. Uh, I put the rechargeable batteries in there and they do appear to be charging from the USB port, but... After a few hours, they get extremely hot to the touch. So clearly there's something wrong going on there and it's not charging them properly. Or it's really just not designed to be always powered via USB. So in this video, I thought I would give this little thing an upgrade by getting rid of those batteries altogether and replace it with a lithium battery that we can charge from the USB port the right way. I'll use a dedicated charger, you know, one of those little uh, off-the-shelf charger modules. See if I can fit something inside there. This case is massive, so I don't see any reason why I couldn't gut it out and, and fit something in there. Uh, and just a quick warning, this is a Geiger counter based on a Geiger Mueller tube, which needs to have at least, what, five or 600 volts across it. So when you're taking these things apart, you got to be careful about the high voltage inside. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started and see how this thing kind of works. And just a little trip down memory lane. Uh, if you've been watching my videos from the very beginning, like 10 plus years ago, you might remember this project. This was my homemade Geiger counter. I actually designed my own crappy high voltage booster over here. That's an RF choke right there. And that's what I use for the, uh, the main boost inductor. So kind of crazy little project. But anyway, let's get back to the BR-6. So we take this apart. It's kind of cool. They've got the battery connection made with a standard JST two millimeter connector. All right, so I just spent some time probing around on the board and now I have a pretty good idea as to how this thing works. And by the way, I only spent a few minutes doing this. So I really was only interested in how the uh, power supply works with everything and how it directs power throughout the board. Uh, but the first thing I really wanted to confirm was, does the board actually try to charge the batteries? And here you see it. We have a charge current going through the USB port here, out through the JST connector to the batteries, and we see a positive current going out from the board to the batteries. So that confirms that it is charging those batteries, and that is why those batteries get so hot when I just leave it plugged in all day long. So let me show you a few measurements now. I'm going to plug this in via USB, and you see that it immediately powers itself on. That's important here. So let's look now and trace out where this 5 volt is going. So we'll grab that for ground, and I can see a trace here coming from the connector over down to this regulator. And we can see 5.1 volts there from the USB. And then the output of this regulator on the tab there is 3.3 volts. So that's the system voltage for the board. And I can even see an, uh, the processor down there below this ribbon cable. And I bet if we grab a measurement off of that little decoupling capacitor there, there we go, 3.3 volts. So everything is running at 3.3 volts and it powers on immediately because it's just going straight through this linear regulator and powers up the board. Now let's look at how it works with the uh, battery input. And we're just going to apply 2.4 volts here to the battery input. So there we see 2.4 volts at the input. I'm gonna look at the 3.3 volts and we see zero volts because with battery input, you want it to be off. When we push the on button there, powers itself on. And now if we look at the output there at that 3.3 volts, there's our 3.3 volt rail. And don't forget, I said we have 2.4 volts feeding the board. So that tells you immediately that we are boosting to 3.3 volts. And if we go down here, let me zoom in a little bit. So if we look right here at the output from this JST connector, the positive 
uh, pin there, and I kind of follow the trace. You see it goes through this little uh, two transistor little circuit here, and then immediately feeds into this inductor. There's an IC here, there's output capacitors. So an inductor on the input of a power supply like this can immediately tell you that this is a booster sort of uh, configuration here. So this is boosting right here to 3.3 volts. But how do those, those uh, buttons there enable this? Well, that's what these two transistors are for, I believe. I think it's just a simple soft latch circuit, and I've made videos on these before. So that's what enables the output from the JST to the input of this booster here, and then it latches itself on, and then through software, the off button is monitored, so you sort of press and hold the off button and it turns itself off. All right, and just for fun, we'll just measure this out. So you see there's our 2.28 at the input, through the transistor, here's the, the point right before the inductor, same thing, and then that feeds on through. We'll look at the output of this IC feeding this electrolytic capacitor, and bingo, there's our 3.3 volts. So now we know that this area right here is for the battery booster to boost to 3.3 volts, and then at the top, at the top right corner here of the board, this is all used to generate the high voltage for the Geiger Mueller tube. And we can even look at that. We'll do this very carefully here. And by the way, it's kind of cool looking at this because you can see in there the diodes. It's uh, forward, back, forward, back with the capacitors out there. This is like your classic voltage multiplier circuit. So let's probe around and see if we can see what the voltage is. And the max input to this meter is 600 volts. So I think we're going to be okay. But let's... Uh, carefully do this. So we'll go through the stages. So there's 6 volts, there's 91 volts, there's 170 volts, <laughs> 240, okay and then the final output stage here, 372. All right, so now that I have an idea as to how this whole thing works, how am I going to implement the lithium battery charger? So what I think I'm going to do first is remove this regulator here, this regulator that generates 3.3 volts. Uh, we don't really need it. What I'm going to do is have the USB only charge the battery, and then the output from the battery will feed in to the input here of the JST, but I can't feed that with 4 volts because this is a booster boosting that low voltage to 3.3 volts. So if I put 4 volts here, it's going to smoke the whole board because, you know, the processor, everything on this board requires that 3.3 volts. So what I'm going to do is on the output of the battery have an ultra low quiescent current uh, regulator that's always on and I'll drop that down to you know maybe 3 volts you know so it's still boosting to 3.3 volts uh, but I'm not dropping down too far so if I drop down to 3 especially on a lithium battery that's going to give me a pretty good uh, battery life there you know if I'm only dropping to 3.3 volts then that's where my cutoff is you know and then it's going to just decay down from there so if I can drop down as low as possible maybe even you know 2.8 volts or something like that would be good but I'll have to check and see what I've got in the junk bin but I'm thinking maybe like an MCP1702 or something like that and looking at the uh, required current to run this whole thing it's like 45 to 50 milliamps so it's actually pretty low current draw uh, from the supply so again a low IQ voltage regulator down to feed this whole thing I think is going to be fine so let me see what I've got laying around and what is going to fit in this little enclosure, and uh, I'll see you back in a minute. Okay, so here is the super rough prototype. I've got a little charger board here that's got the USB input. So I removed the linear regulator off of this board, and from the 5 volts now it goes over to the input of this board, so we can still use the stock USB connector here. So that 5 volts will go into here to charge the battery. And then the output from this board, which is the battery output, feeds an MCP1702. Well, I'll, I'll draw this whole schematic up here at the end and talk through this a little bit more. But just as a quick prototype here, I just wanted to show you this. So then the output of the MCP1702 
is the 3.3 volts. I couldn't find a three volt one, so we'll just use what I've got here. Feeds then the battery connector. So because I removed that linear regulator over here, the five volts now cannot charge the battery on the board here. So there's no back feeding through that load switch circuit to charge the battery. All charging is done through this dedicated board here. And then the output feeds the existing battery input. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, battery is plugged in. We'll flip this around and push the on button. Hey, there we go, it works. So we should not see five volts or anything there. We're good. We've got, there's our 3.3 volts. So that's good. The input to the board, that's oh, about three volts or so. Oh, maybe I found a three volt version. You know, I may have actually. Because, yeah, we're seeing three volts here. Or maybe there's a little bit of drop through through everything down to it. So it is still boosting it from their three volts. Then the output is 3.3 volts. So that's pretty cool. Now let's see if it charges. Okay, for charging, we're going to use the onboard USB connector. Here we go. And there you have it. So it is charging. You see the red LED is on there. And I'm got, I've got this big 2,000 milliamp hour battery that I'm hoping I can somehow fit inside this existing enclosure. And let's talk about battery life now. So um, we've got this always on 3 volt regulator there feeding into the board. And, we're, and the whole purpose there is so that we can utilize the same latch circuit and you know the on off buttons all work and the key with this because it is battery powered if i don't have it always plugged into usb i don't want the battery to self discharge which is why i chose that mcp1702 it's a couple you know microamp current draw just from the battery with no load so let's test that i'll apply four volts through the ot arc here and then we'll just look at what the current draw is so let's apply four volts and just to verify that the unit is off right now, let's see what the leakage current is here in the system. So with four volts applied, let's look at what the leakage current is. We'll start a plot and you see there the average current is about five microamps. So that's actually really good. So all of that current is in the MCP1702 in terms of leakage and maybe there's a little bit of leakage back into the uh, little charger board here, but only a couple microamps, that's no big deal. And especially with the 2000 milliamp hour battery. And just to get an idea what the current draw is here from the battery. Okay, I'll start a new plot for that. And there you see, it's about you know, 45 or so milliamps. So again, you know, with the MCP1702, it can handle about 250 milliamps. That's not gonna be a big deal at all. So let me uh, button all of this up and then I'll draw the schematic out uh, for you just for reference. All right, check it out. It's all buttoned up, running off of a lithium battery. Let me open it up and show you the finished product. So you see what I had to do here is cut away at the existing battery holder, but this 2000 milliamp hour battery fits perfectly down in there. So just with some double-sided tape, I've got that sitting in there. Then the little charge controller, is right there on the top side. And then I kind of tried to heat shrink it all together. So we've got the five volt tap now coming down from where that linear regulator was. You see, I removed that, that was easy. And then the five volt input pin now is tapped over, goes to this uh, charge controller. We've got the MCP1702 on the output. And then from there, we've got two wires going over to the JST input on the Geiger board and everything works great. So you can see right now it's charging. I can disconnect that. The unit stays on. It's purely running from the lithium battery now and then everything buttons up really nicely in there. So there you have it, turned out pretty good. And as promised, let me just show you some of these parts here. So this is the charger board. You know, I buy these uh, you know, 10 pack at a time. You see they're super cheap. Um, and these have kind of everything you need. You've got the five volt input or USB input. 
the battery terminals, and then the output. And then this is the exact uh, MCP1702-33. So the one I used is actually 3.3 volts. It was the only one I had laying around, so that's what I used. And just taking a quick look here at the data sheet, you see how nice this part is for this because this is always on all the time pulling current from the battery. So it's important that your quiescent current draw is extremely low. And you see here two microamps. And when I was benchmarking it, we saw around five or so microamps, some going to this part and then probably some back feeding into the charger as well. If we scroll down here, it's important with this part to have the right capacitance on the input and output. So I had, I don't have ceramic one mics laying around and I wanted to use all through hole components. So what I did was combine a 0.1 microfarad cer ceramic with a one microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor on both the input and output of this regulator. So if we go over here to this drawing, you see kind of how I have things hooked up. And if you want to keep this for reference, pause the video, take a screenshot here. So at the input here, this is where I remove that linear regulator. We had five volts coming in from USB to the board. And then this is where it was making 3.3 volts, which was causing all kinds of trouble for me because it was back feeding through the booster regulator uh, and cooking those 1.2 volt batteries when I had it just left on USB power all day long. So now it can't do that because the 5 volt stops right here. It can't get through the regulator. Now we just hack in a wire over to the charger board, and that's where it will handle battery charging the right way. So at the B plus and B minus terminals, we've got the 2,000 milliamp hour battery. And then at the output there, we've got that going over, feeding the MCP1702. So it's all through whole components, which kind of made this little hack easy. We've got the one mic with the 0.1 there, like I mentioned, the electrolytic with the ceramic, and this seemed to work pretty good. Now, before you connect this up to the Geiger board, I recommend actually testing it, making sure that you know, you've know you got 3.3 volts at the output. Also feel the regulator and see if it feels warm to the touch, because if these caps here aren't right, it'll oscillate and you'll actually feel that as heat on the part. So, uh, and that's not gonna be good either for your quiescent current draw, which also if you have the ability, it would be good to put a meter in line with this output or you know, in line with the battery input to the board just to see if you're getting you know, that single digit microamp draw when, just, uh, when it's just sitting there not connected to the Geiger board. And I don't think I have to mention why it's important, but be careful with the polarity input to the board. And obviously guys, you saw we've got like 370 some volts on the board. So be careful when this stuff is all powered on. And this was kind of a different approach to a video. Usually I'll do the project and then kind of document it later. So this was uh, kind of fun, just kind of doing it live, figuring things out. But that's all I got, just a quick and dirty hack here for this cheap Geiger counter. Thanks for watching.